On this investigation by Evidence Paranormal, the team travels to the Tri-County Truck Stop in Villa Ridge, Missouri to participate in a local ghost hunt event hosted by the Paranormal Task Force. Lots of ghostly experiences have been documented right here from this closed establishment. But with the many people in attendance, will the EPI be successful in finding the proof they seek within the few hours they have to investigate? This time EPI tried something completely different and participated in a local late night ghost hunt event in Villa Ridge, Missouri at a location known as the Tri-County Truck Stop. Hosted by the professional team of investigators from the Paranormal Task Force, we were taken down memory lane for a very informative historical tour within. Before the explosion of drive through fast food, Places like truck stops or diners, along highways or roads, were the place to visit to extinguish that hunger, if you were on a long trip. And in addition to a well-cooked meal, if you listen close enough to the employees, the locals, as well as law enforcement, you can learn much about the strange things that happened there, as well as the tragic ones. Like that of a truck driver with his prosthetic leg, who was struck by a passing vehicle as he was attempting to walk inside. There was also the story of a young boy who was struck by a moving vehicle as well, who was attempting to walk around a parked bus. And if you take all that into consideration, and then some, this is how paranormal activity begins. After closing in September of 2006 due to health and safety issues, Crowds of people are probably something rarely seen outside of events such as these historical tours and ghost hunts. After arriving and a briefing on how the night will go down, we finished prepping our equipment in time for an introduction by one of the investigators leading the historical tour. Alright, I guess we'll get started on the historical uh, part here. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all to the Tri-County Truck Stop. We are Paranormal Task Force. Um, we're a nonprofit organization that uh, basically has two missions. Our number one mission is we assist with paranormal problems, um, private investigations in homes. We answer any any kind of questions that we can. We analyze EVPs. Um, and our second mission is uh, historical preservation of sites like this. Without groups like these that give back to the communities, buildings with forgotten historical value would remain just that. Forgotten. After the introduction, the group broke up into two teams, the first floor and the basement. and it was the first floor that we began our tour.
Once you walk into this building from the rear receiving area, your eyesight begins to adjust to the darkness. The awesome size of this empty place really begins to take hold after a while. Our tour guide shares with us some early history of how this location first came to be. How the location began is pretty interesting if you ask me. Despite the roof being torn off by strong winds and years later a fire, it pretty much held its own in the face of bad luck. Moving along through the hall, we stopped as other attendees snapped photos and squinted into the darkness at what used to be a fully functional business almost 10 years before. And let me assure you one thing about this place. <laughs> it was dark. Despite the large crowd that we were part of, you still felt the creep factor while you were walking through here. Slowly moving along through the kitchen, we made our way to what used to be the seating area where you would normally eat your dinner. Here, once again, we stopped while the guide shared some more historical information, as well as some of their own personal paranormal experiences accumulated from their past investigations here. Especially the story of the Blue Ghost, which they did catch on video and saw with their own eyes. After a while, even Greg Myers, the president of the Paranormal Task Force, shared some of his own experiences with everyone. After learning of the spirits that may roam the seating area we were just in, we strolled along to other dark corners. Of course, as we went along, I performed a baseline sweep. Whether these are the actual ghosts of those names investigators attempt to reach out to, we may never know. But it's the details of this team's experiences that will certainly guide other curious seekers onto the correct path. Unlike your average basement, in this one, you definitely get that airy vibe. What's good to know is that because of the adequate lighting, you can tell repair work is underway to save this building. It was amazing how the crowd absorbed all the information that the Paranormal Task Force shared with everyone. One thing was very obvious. People were listening. Listening with opened minds. So that's something you don't expect, a light bulb flying across the room and landing in front of you. That scared the hell out of all of us. Their knowledge and their experiences gave everyone starting points to consider, especially before the ghost hunt was to begin. Considering the length of the basement, we were certain there would be no shortage of darkness. And once those lights go out, it's everyone's guess as to what might happen. As I looked at some of the expressions, it was obvious some people were getting a little nervous. But, with all of the historical information, the tragedies, as well as the paranormal events they've experienced, I couldn't wait to begin. Within a few more minutes, the tour had ended, and we were instructed to regroup upstairs. Despite my eagerness to begin this investigation, 
Some people's expressions were a little bit less enthusiastic. More like, do I really want to do this? That's when the reality sets in. That they're not watching this on television in the safety of their own home. This is the real thing. And now that the lengthy tour was over, it was time to go outside, restock our power supplies, and return for the investigation we were there for. The Tri-County Truck Stop in Villa Ridge, Missouri. This is one of several places I've wanted to visit for the past few years now, and on this night, my wish finally came true. Keeping in mind the next half of the evening was only a couple hours, I still wanted to do my best and see what we could find. True, some locations produce zero results, but I appreciate the chance to at least have the experience of being there. After the tour, our group was led back to what used to be the seating area. Here, members of the Paranormal Task Force handed out loaner equipment such as K2s, cell centers, and millimeters, and demonstrated the proper way to use them. Just having a light flicker on a device is never a guarantee that you've made contact with the other side. Electrical signals can trigger a response from almost anywhere. A cell phone, fluorescent light fixtures, a wall socket can all produce false readings on these devices which is why you always select to investigate in locations where such readings do not occur. Cell phones can be put in airplane mode, or even turned off to prevent such things. But no matter how much someone spends on paranormal equipment, your best and most reliable method of detection lies with your body and its five senses. I can personally vouch for that. Testing various corners of the seating area, we were confident that we wouldn't detect misleading electrical signals. Somebody want to talk to us? Because of the serious audio contamination, we already knew not to expect any EVPs from our video or digital recorders. We've never seen this before, but we're very interested in you. Not seeing any REM pods in use, I decided to demonstrate ours in hopes of welcoming some results. One lights up, touch it even closer. You really hold it, they all go off. But you have to remember, it is believed that the dead outnumber the living. And if that's true, we could be outnumbered in this room right now. Can you make the good old point too? Please? Knowing that spirits can manipulate environmental temperatures by drawing energy from the air to collect in an attempt to manifest or communicate, Mary tried to reach out and invite a response. Unfortunately, with no luck. Within 30 minutes of beginning our investigation, we decided to relocate and sit directly by the curved boarded up windows. At least here, after doing a baseline check, we knew we wouldn't get any false readings. By doing this, we had hoped to have increased our chances of getting results. And apparently, it began paying off. If 
that's really you. Can you make that light up to the red? Please. It's going close. Come on, give it all you got. To be sure these might be genuine responses and not signals on a repeating cycle, she would sit silently before continuing her questions. And if she was silent, they were too. If this is your chair, light it up. But as soon as she would start talking to them again... Okay, good, good. So this is the chair you like to sit on, right? Light it up. Really? So far, we had no reason to doubt. Are you still here? You gotta light those lights up for me if, you, if you're still here. Thank you. Did you used to work here? Did you used to work here? Did you light the lights? Did you drive a truck? Can you light up those lights if you drove a truck? Drove a truck, okay. Did you like the pie here? I understand it was really good. Okay, we gotta have liked the pie. Okay. After about a slow 20 minute conversation through K2 use, we decided to switch off and see if there'd be any interest in talking to me. But of course, I was warned there may not be any interest in chatting with me because of the difference of my anatomy. I cannot believe you just went there. Yeah, laugh it up, Fuzzball. Well, I look at it this way. At least one of us got a response before we gave up. After investigating for an hour, we dismantled and gathered up our equipment so we could momentarily move to the next location. Of course, we were very careful not to leave anything behind. Lights are going back on, we're gonna move. In packing up our gear to leave the first floor, I could only wonder what kind of activity awaited us in the basement. The Tri-County Truck Stop has proven to be a very interesting place to investigate. We just finished taking a break after an hour session on the first floor, and we were now ready to trade with the other group and move into the basement, where we again would try to reach out to whatever spirit entities might be present. Watching the crowd, I couldn't help but notice how total strangers banded together in light of what they were all about to participate in. Oh, you could tell people were getting nervous. Maybe they too were there to find answers, just like we were. Or maybe they've had personal experiences and needed closure to things they witnessed that were left unexplained. I wouldn't think spirits or ghosts would really be impressed with all of the hardware paranormal groups use to capture proof of their existence. However, to convince the living skeptics, we need something they'll understand as proof. You can just imagine how hard it was, hundreds of years ago, without satellite aerial photography, to convince someone who believed the Earth was flat that it was in fact round. Can you imagine the looks on their faces when they finally proved it? That's what we're striving for.
Once everyone found their corners, the lights were about to go out. All right, we're going dark. We selected the darkest and furthest region of the basement and set up a full spectrum stationary camcorder as well as a REM pod. And it didn't take long before we started getting hits on the obelisk. Whoa! Who's talking to us? Under. There's somebody under here? Unbeknownst to us, right after we set up the full spectrum camcorder, something drained the power supply. Even though other groups were using them, I decided to set up our own laser grid on the wall behind us. And apparently it didn't take long before something started happening. What was it? I just heard something go. Yeah. There's something in my ear. But honestly, it could have been anything when you consider all the audio contamination that was in the room. Or was it? Could something had actually been around us trying to communicate? Instead of waiting, I decided to stand up and stroll around and check room temperature and EMF levels. Room temperature seemed to be fluctuating between 76.4 and 77.2. EMF? Non-existent. But the skeptic in me always wants to check to be sure. Are you getting anything? There just seemed to be a hum or a vibration in the air. I couldn't figure out what it was. Nothing you could hear. Just a feeling. Kind of like being slowly circled by someone. Someone you should see, but can't. Just then, my mail meter registered a three point. Point three? No, three point. Ooh. Can you drop oh. this temperature to 70? I decided to give whatever was there a chance to try to reach out and communicate with me. So I asked it to drop the mail meter temperature to 70 degrees. But when you investigate, you may end up with a big surprise. Because when you reach out to communicate with these entities or spirits, you may get the response you were looking for. So be prepared and be careful. It felt like somebody had closed a freezer door right behind me, immediately followed by something cold rubbing against my arm. Something uh, just. Somebody's got the chilies. Somebody got me. <laughs> it literally brushed Sorry. against me. No. No, no, no. Chili willies. No, no, something brushed against me like somebody just walked past me. There's nobody here. His hair is sticking straight <laughs> up. I got the goosebumps and everything. Look at that. And just then, I noticed the millimeter reading. 70 degrees, just what I asked for. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I got 70 degrees. Did you see it? Uh-huh. And again, the temperature rose to 76 degrees. The remainder of the evening continued without much more happening. When you consider the number of people who attended this event and the few hours we had, I feel very privileged that we caught anything at all. Mary and her possible truck driver chatting with her through the K2, and my being touched and the fluctuating temperature responses on my millimeter. In all, for us to even meet the members of the Paranormal Task Force, it was one awesome night. But, if this is where spirit truck drivers or other ghostly entities, residual or intelligent, still travel to, then we wish them a safe drive on the Afterlife Highway.